Google's AI mode is changing SEO very quickly and 90% of the businesses I see online have no idea how to adapt. If you're still optimizing your website like it's 2023, you are quickly going to disappear or become invisible. The good thing is that Google have laid out exactly what you need to do in order to provide yourself with the highest possibilities to rank in Google's AI's overview. The bad thing is that in classic Google fashion, what they give you is broad, it's way too vague. And to be honest, these days, we don't know if we can trust on Google Google because what they tell us to do to rank a website differentiates an incredible amount to what they actually do to rank a website. But through trial and error and a lot of hands-on work trying to decipher what Google mean and what seeing what actually works for us, we've come up with a five-step method that really helps us rank. You can see here and here that it's helped us rank for a few search terms and even for a lot of our community members. In this video, I'm going to show you what the real difference is between traditional SEO and this new AI search engine era, the five-step method you need to take to ensure you give yourself the highest possibility to show up and get featured on the AI search engine, and to understand whether you can do this all yourself or if you're going to need to hire an agency to do this for you. You might have heard of a few special terms like AEO, Answer Engine Optimizations or AI SEO. And to be honest, whatever marketing term you want to sprinkle on this doesn't really matter. What you need to know is that you still need to do traditional SEO and rank on the first page of Google because the search engines only shop for their sources on the first page of Google. It wouldn't really make sense for them to find some source or website on the third or fourth page to use for their answers. So you still need to do traditional SEO, but on top of that, you need to do a few added things to, again, give you the highest possibility to get featured and rank on the AI search engine. And that's where we get into our checklist with step number one, and that is focus on unique and valuable content for people. Google also mentions this as people first content, and this sounds great on paper, but what on earth does this actually mean? And there's a lot of things that attribute to people first content, but I found these two things that always help me in creating people first content. The first one is make sure you share your personal experience whenever you can when you're writing blogs or content. For example, you might want to write a lot of case studies showing your expertise or whenever you're writing a blog post you do, you say you want to do X not Z because when you do Z we found this has this effect. Those type of examples. And this is so good because one, it makes you a little bit more trustworthy and credible, but also it's the one thing that A, I, at least as of the time of this recording, can't quite replicate yet. They can't share or replicate your experience. I'm sure they will soon, but not yet. And that has always helped me create unique content that can't quite be replicated that helps me achieve those AI overviews. A really easy way to naturally and easily inject your experiences or your wins when you're writing content is make sure you keep a folder, whether that's Google Drive or on your desktop, of screenshots or recordings of your wins or of your experiences. And what you want to do is place that inside a project within GPT. You can use this with Claude as well. What I like to do is put a project file within inside the projects files. I throw in all the recent wins that we've had, for example, of our community. We've got a couple of here that people explain what they won or how they've won in SEO or gotten a new client or whatever that is. But I drop all of those into the projects files of GPT. And I've got an instruction here throughout the instructions. I'm telling you to make sure that you go through your my experiences that you have in your project files and see how you can naturally inject those throughout the content. Then I don't have to think about that too much. GPT does most of the work for me. I find this an incredible collaborative way to write with GPT where it's not a replacement of your writing, but it's an enhancement. You can easily place in your experiences with the help of GPT. Again, you can do this with Claude as well. We have a detailed tutorial in our online community on how to do this that takes you through the steps and all the prompts you need to be able to create this easily personalized content that shares your experience. And the second thing that will help you write this people first content is actually writing content that people are looking for the answers to. We used to get so caught up in optimizing for the actual keyword and see how many supporting keywords we can put in an article and that doesn't tend to work as well these days. What is working is finding the questions that people are asking about your topic, 
and dedicating a blog post to answering that question in detail. One of the easiest tools and one of my favorites that you can use to find the frequently asked questions about a topic is called Answer Socrates. I've talked about this many times. What you want to do is put in your topic. Let's say dog training, for example, you want to put it in the country. Let's leave it in the UK and go search. This will search for all the frequently asked questions around this topic. What you want to do then is dedicate a blog post for a question. For example, what are the five golden rules of dog training? You want to write a blog post that has that answer in detail. But there's also a specific way you want to write the blog post to give you the highest possibility to get up on that search engine, on that AI search engine. And that leads us to step number two. And that is when you are writing the content, ideally you want a header, a H2 or a H3, to be the question that people are asking. For example, why is SEO critical for financial advisors? This is one of our blog posts that is starting to do a little bit better. And you wanna answer that question right away as quickly as possible in a sentence manner. So for example, here, when somebody needs a financial advisor, they don't just pick the first name that come out of a hat, they research extensively. So that is answering that question. Probably the second paragraph is answering that a little bit better, but you get the idea. And this constantly seems to work in getting reference and featured on the AI overviews. But first of all, that blog post still needs to be ranking on the first page to be even considered. So to summarize, when you are writing this content, make sure you can answer the question that you have on the H2 or H3 of the blog post as quickly and as naturally as possible. Checklist number three is schema. And I sound like a broken record these days because I say schema is important because it is and it works. If you don't know what schema is, it's a bit of code you can put on the header of your page that tells Google and the other AI search engines exactly and instantly what is on your page. And there's schema for everything, whether you have a service or you're selling a book or you're a plumber. For example, you can use this website here, schema.org is the official website. And on the search bar, let's go plumbing. And you can see if there's plumbing for that, for sure. There's plumber schema. Let's see what that looks like and how to create it. And it's under organization, local business, <laughs> plumber, place, location. And it can tell you the type of schema, how to write it, and, to, and a bunch of different things. Let's say you uh, want to sell a book. You can put book here. And yeah, look at that. There is a book types schema. One really quick and easy way to see if you've actually got schema is the right schema, sorry, on your page is Google's schema test results or rich results test. If you place in your URL there and there's no schema or the right type of schema that we just saw with the other tool, then you need to do a little bit of work. And the reason why schema is so important in the day and age of AI is that the AI search engines want to be as efficient as possible when they're crawling and understanding all this information. And schema, like I said, tells them exactly what you have on your page. You want to make their job easier to increase your chances to actually rank and be featured on the AI overviews. Number five is being everywhere. And I know this sounds silly, but what I mean is you need to start thinking of SEO as search engine optimization to search everywhere optimization. And I know I've changed this SEO wording and I know that's a little catchphrase, but if you think about it like that, you're providing yourself with the highest opportunity to actually rank everywhere. And that's the end of the game these days. For example, if I Google or if I look on YouTube, how to automate SEO tasks like keyword research, we are coming up first right below a sponsored post, but that's pretty good. Now, let me Google that, how to automate keyword SEO tasks like keyword research. And again, we are right below the sponsored post as a video. So we might not be ranking organically number one, but I'm still taking a lot of real estate space. I, I'm actually <laughs> on two positions there. Now, that's uh, not to kind of toot my own horn, but it's to give you the example that sometimes the search intent deems for a video to give a better explanation. So you want to be on YouTube, on TikTok, on all the platforms that you think are appropriate for you to be on. Now, you need to understand that there is differences for each of the platforms. They all have their little intricate nuances. What might work on TikTok probably is not gonna work on Instagram Reels, at least not for us anyway. Now, a good way to make this job a little bit easier is start understanding how to use automations, particularly AI-driven automations. This one, for example, is triggered every time we publish a blog post. We scrape the contents, we even create an image for it, and we create from that original blog post a LinkedIn post, a Pinterest post, a Facebook post, and an Instagram post. This 
repurposes the content appropriately, not just grabs a section of the blog post and throws it to LinkedIn and says, hey, if you wanna read more, check this out. No, you wanna add all the value that you created on the blog post, including your experiences, as we said in the beginning, and place that into the LinkedIn post. You can place in your tone of voice and a lot of other things. But the idea is to understand that just because you're optimizing for Google, well, you're probably going to be missing out on a lot of other potential traffic. So make sure you get yourself on TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest, whatever all the other platforms that you think are relevant to you. And I wanna give you a bonus one, number six, and that's creating content that the AI overview can't replicate. And for me, it's interactive tools. Let me give you a quick example here. I have a tool that we've built, the free SEO keyword research tool, where you place in a keyword, dog training, place in the location, you search the keyword, and that's going to give you the related keywords for that word. This is a free tool that people can use on my website. Now, to get the value of the free tool, people have to click through to the page. They're not gonna get this information on the AI overview, at least not yet. If you don't have an SEO business like myself, you can do like a cost calculator if you're a financial advisor, a ring size calculator if you are a jeweler. You can think of a hundred different things and this stuff really, really works. It brings in a lot of traffic for us. You can also add little interactive elements on your blog post. It's really easy to do these days with all the AI tools that we have with us, that we have available to us. This also increases the on time spent on the page, which is a positive signal for Google. And now that you have this six step checklist, you can decide to yourself whether you feel comfortable doing all these things yourselves. If you think you are, then you can probably do your SEO. You might wanna consider if you've actually got 45 minutes a week to do so, then you're on the clear. If you don't have that time, then you might wanna consider hiring someone or outsourcing it to an agency. Now, if you've got the time to do this, what I recommend you do is watch this video next, and that's gonna show you how to create an interactive tool like this that you can place on your website, and it's gonna bring you a lot of traffic. We do this with Gemini 2.5 Pro. Its Canvas feature makes this extremely easy. The video takes you through the whole thing. Got any questions? Let me know.